Hi there, this is Carl Irwin, and uh, today we're going to look at the LSP Linux Studio Plugins Room Builder. Uh, this is the stereo iteration of the Room Builder. There's a mono variation as well with a mono input. And uh, this is a follow up on the other reverb plugin that we saw from LSP uh, last time, which was the Impulse Reverb uh, plugin. Uh, this is also an Impulse Reverb plugin, but it does something a little different. It actually simulates real space. Uh, this is very similar to uh, some other plugins that are out on the market that are proprietary that do the same thing, and also other plugins that uh, have modeled real spaces, uh, particularly some very famous real spaces, echo chambers at various studios uh, all over the world. And uh, this does very much the same kind of thing, but it does it virtually. Uh, inside of the program, you have a 3D viewport, uh, and in here you can load in models, you can create models uh, that are in uh, a particular format. You see here, if we uh, click on the load, you can load in an OBJ format, and uh, we'll look at this here in a moment, but it also has some presets. So this uh, plugin does come with presets. If you look here under the menu, you can see that we have uh, uh, various presets, about six or seven presets. Uh, that will uh, load in. These are different 3D models uh, with material settings that you can load in to the plugin. One is a, a large room, they call it an auditorium. Another one is a bathroom, very small kind of room space. Another is an outside sort of city block situation where you have buildings around. There's one they call a church. It's kind of a contemporary uh, worship space that is an odd shape. Uh, there's a developer's room, which is just a plain square room, and then you have an office space, which is what we're looking at right here, and then a swimming pool uh, is another uh, option that they have, so kind of like a, uh, a lap sort of pool environment with uh, stands on the side uh, and then uh, hard surfaces. The surfaces can be edited uh, by going over here to the uh, editor window. Here you can edit the source, which is the sound generation item. We'll look at that in a moment. Then there's a microphone, which is a um, capture uh, device. And then there is an object editor. So in the object editor, you can change the different colors. You can move the object around and change its orientation uh, and its scale. Uh, you can also change the scale of the room over here using the uh, um, uh, X, Y, and Z controls over in the room browser. Uh, but you can also change the materials. If you click on the material editor, it will give you a drop down that shows you different uh, items. So if you load in your own uh, your own model, it will list all of the separate items that are part of that model collection, and you can select each one of them individually. And then you can add a pre you can add a preset um, material to it. And there's quite a few presets in here uh, that you can apply. Uh, a lot of a lot of different options on here. Um, you you're not likely to use many of these. Uh, you'll probably stick with just a few that you like, um, and they will approximate those materials for. Uh, as a, a surface for sound to bounce off of. Uh, there's quite a few other controls in here as well um, related to uh, uh, other elements in the scene. You have a source editor. So if we zoom in, uh, by the way, there's three point uh, navigation here. You have a left, a right, or a scroll button. If you click, you can, on the scroll button, you can sort of rotate the camera. If you left button click, you can change the XY orientation of the camera. And then if you right button click and then uh, move the mouse, you can zoom in and out on sort of a Z axis. So if we uh, zoom in here, get our orientation, you can see this source element over here, which you can also edit uh, from the editor. If we go to the source and we can change the uh, type of source in terms of shape, a lot of different shapes. This is an uh, icosahedron, which is sort of a ball. And you can change also the uh, angle at which the uh, uh, sound is generated from this uh, using various controls here. There's so many different options to play around with in terms of bouncing sound around a room. On the other side of the spectrum, if we go all the way over here, we slide to the other side of the room, I have a mono microphone, and uh, you can edit that over here in the capture editor. You can uh, set the mode to mono X, Y, A, B, uh, where you'd have two different separate microphones, X, Y, where you'd have uh, a, a left and right microphone from a central source. 
Uh, you can change, of course, the direction of these microphones and the angles of the microphones. Uh, I like to use a mono microphone, and that way I'm capturing one particular sound that I can apply it to my stereo channel, um, much as I would do with an impulse file. Uh, and this is, uh, these are all the controls. You can change the location using the uh, uh, various controls here for uh, the location, X, Y, and Z. Uh, axes and uh, yeah that's pretty much it for the controls let's take a look at uh, the process then for capture what you do is you set the quality and then you hit launch and then it will run through a process of capturing that sound uh, be warned that the higher the quality the longer it will take for capture and depending on your system you may have some crashes if you set your quality too high and you don't have enough system resources to deal with that but at the end you will get an output file which will be over here in your sample. This is the sample output uh, impulse file that we get. You can audition that by clicking on listen. You can hear that sort of crunchy sound. Uh, and then this is the model by which the reverb will be um, applied. So if we listen back, I have this set uh, right now to a setting and you can hear uh, what this sounds like first without the sound. This is a flute uh, solo, I'll hit play. and then enabled and you can see that it places the uh, sound the sound into a space uh, and I've set my wet and my dry um, you can also as I said load in uh, other models if you choose we'll click on the load uh, uh, button here and we'll click on the uh, medium room OBJ this is one that I created in blender we'll open this up and you can see the orientation is based on what it was like in Blender. We can uh, fix the orientation here by selecting room orientation. And we'll go to X uh, plus X forward and plus Y up. And now the orientation is correct. And then we can also uh, move uh, the room around. If we go over here to the room editor, object editor, and uh, you can select various objects and move them around. Uh, we can also uh, move this in space. We can change the uh, dimensions of it uh, by selecting X and Y, and this will increase the uh, or decrease the uh, uh, ratio of the room. Uh, we can scale also over here as well. We can scale our room. Uh, and then we can uh, reposition our microphone. And just for the sake of recording, uh, I will uh, record this very quickly by taking the quality and setting it really, really, really low, we'll just set this way down to about uh, 15, 10 or 15% quality. Then you would hit launch. And you can see that this will capture. And just for time, I'm setting it quite, quite low. And then the final output will show up over here in your uh, sample. You can see it's very, very low sample quality because of the size. Uh, but those are the basic controls. Um, the nice thing about this is that you can save your samples. If you go to the sample that, you, that you're using and you click on save, you can export this as a WAV file. And then you could use this actually outside of this program inside of a convolution reverb, any convolution reverb. You could use it in the LSP impulse reverb or any other convolution reverb of your choice. The controls down here for uh, application are very much like the impulse reverb, the LSPO or the LSP uh, convolution reverb that we looked at last time. You can set your channels left and right. You can set your source from the particular sample that you have. You can mix and match various samples. It gives you four separate channels by which you can mix various samples and sources. And uh, from there, you can come up with a very complex uh, sort of output. So that is the LSP Room Builder. This uh, plugin is an absolute rabbit hole. Uh, you will find yourself playing around with various uh, uh, configurations, and if you create models, various uh, models that you can import, uh, creating impulse responses uh, till the cows come home, uh, it is an absolute rabbit hole, but it is a very, very fun and interesting sort of plug-in uh, to create these uh, convolution uh, reverb impulse files in a virtual environment. Uh, very much, very much like uh, some of these other uh, applications that are proprietary and on the market. I know there's one for Abbey Road uh, Studio and their, uh, their echo chamber. 
other echo chambers at other studios. It's a very similar kind of concept, but we're actually designing the room in virtual space. So that is the LSP Room Builder. Uh, good luck with this and happy mixing.